Hi, for today's class, we're going to be working with section 13.1b, number 13. Part A says, refer to the following figure and use paper folding or any other method to show that P prime is the image of P under rotation about point O by a given angle. Then O is on the perpendicular bisector of segment P, P prime. So I already traced the diagram for us over here. And as we can see, we have P and P prime in O. So let's look at what we know first. We know that point O is a center of rotation. Since it is a center of rotation, that means it is a fixed point. So now we want to look at the line segment and notice that the change, the lengths don't change when we're looking for a perpendicular bisector. So we're going to use the folding paper or the paper folding method and fold it right along the line. And as we unfold it now, you will notice that P and P prime line up so that their lines are the same. We have those little lines where the point P, point P prime and P are, and they line up perfectly so that then we have equal distance of the lengths. So that is how we know that um, they, are, they are going to be similar because when we look at what we know about similar triangles, we know that um, we have the right angle and the same distance and they share this um, side as well. So if we're looking at this side that we know is the same since they share it and these two sides that we just found are the same, we now know that by using side angle side that these two triangles are going to be perpendicular and this line um, that runs through point O is a perpendicular bisector since it forms the right angle. Now for point B, it says A prime, B prime, C prime, the triangle, shown in the following figure was obtained by rotating triangle ABC about a certain point O. Explain how to find the point O and the angle of rotation. So I already drew the, or traced the diagram for us. And first we need to connect two points with a straight edge. So this paper is going to be our straight edge connecting A prime to A, because those we are going to try to find the, perpendicular bisector of those two points. Oops, sorry about that. My paper got a little, or my straight edge got a little flimsy, so we're just going to go over that again. Oh, beautiful line. Now we're going to um, find the perpendicular bisector by using our compass and putting it on point A prime and drawing two arcs and then we're going to put it on um, the other one. So we're finding A prime and A so it doesn't matter if you start with A prime or A and you just gotta draw your two arcs and then where they intersected right there and right there you're going to use your straight edge and connect the points of intersection. So that line now is our perpendicular bisector for segment AA prime. And now we need to find, um, we need to do it again with two more points. So we're going to use our straight edge and take it from point B to B prime and draw a straight line. And now we are going to do the same thing with our compass for B prime and B. So we're going to draw our arcs. And then I'm just going to label that arc so we know which one we are working with since there's, since there's kind of a lot of lines on the paper. And I'm going to mark it on this side as well, just so we don't get confused. And then we take the same distance of the arc from B over to this one that we're measuring. And then now we look at where those two intersected as well. And we are going to use our straight edge and connect the points of intersection. I'm going to extend this line so we don't get it confused. So um, this line um, that I just drew now is going to be our um, perpendicular bisector 
and now we need to find our perpendicular bisector for a prime which is right here so I'm going to extend this one as well so we know which ones we're working with so we're working with this line and this line and we're going to find where they intersect which is at this point right here I'm going to erase the other lines so that it doesn't look so hectic on our diagram so that we can really see the point O right there so that is going to be our center of rotation for um, the image and the pre-image. And now for the angle of rotation, we have to use the center of rotation, which is that point O that we found. And you're going to draw a line to the original point O. I'm sorry, from point A, from point, from this point to the original point A. And then you're going to take that same center and draw a line from there to a prime. And then for us, these end up being about 180 degrees, just as we can tell. But normally you would want to use a protractor and you'll just, you'd extend the lines far enough so that you can get it lined up with your protractor, which we do not have available for us to use today. And that is how you find the angle of rotation and the perpendicular bisectors. And the center of rotation, I'm sorry. And now for point, or part C, we have triangles A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime. And we know that they are congruent. Trace them and explain why it is impossible to find a rotation under which A prime, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is the image of triangle A, B, C. So I traced it for us over here already. And for this one, we want to look at where our vertices are. So we see that A, B, C is over here, and then A prime, B prime, C prime is over here. So we are looking for rotation. So that means that we are going to have a center of rotation, like how in part B, how we found point O. Um, that's not exactly where point O is, but if we were to have point O, we would see that these would just rotate this way. So if I cut out the original triangle, we will see when I rotate it that it is impossible for A prime, B prime, C prime to be a rotation because this does not include um, any other type of translation. It is only rotation that we're asking about. So if this is the point and we keep rotating it in a circle along the way, we will notice that now we have A on top of B, which is not what we want. So um, we can notice that it could maybe be a reflection because then you get that the B and the A would line up. But if we're just rotating it, even if we rotate it the other way now, we see that once again we have C that is rotated, but A is in place of B and um, once again B is in place of A. So that is how we know if we use a center of rotation that these two images cannot be a rotation of one another.